Wow, I never thought I'd be writing down US 95 in the bed of a hundred year old Model T Ford. Hello, Wonder Hussy here in fabulous Goldfield, Nevada. Goldfield is a historic mining town about halfway between Las Vegas and Reno, sort of in the middle of nowhere. And even though US 95 passes right through the middle of town, most people don't even bother stopping because there's no gas station. But back in the early 1900s, Goldfield was actually the biggest city in Nevada. As you can probably tell from the name, gold was discovered here back in 1902. And by 1906, something like 20,000 people were living here. But eventually they mined up all the gold and in the classic tradition of boom and bust mining towns, Goldfield kind of faded away to the point where nowadays, I think there's only two or 300 people living here. And like I said, there's not even a gas station. But one thing they do have is a ton of history and really cool historic old buildings and ruins. And every year they celebrate their history on the first weekend of August at an event called Goldfield Days. I've always been curious about Goldfield Days. So this year I finally decided to come up and check it out. I just rolled into town, so the first thing I need to do is figure out where I'm gonna stay. One of the townsfolk offered me some pretty interesting accommodations, so let's go check them out. Uh-oh, it's a hitchhiker. Oh my gosh, I know that hitchhiker. Howdy. It's Doug Berry, <laughs> the singing cowboy. Hello, Time to sing. Wow, everyone's here, huh? This is a big party. Yeah. Of well, you just live right up the road in Hawthorne. Not too far. It sure was nice to see Doug again. Since we went camping together last winter, his channel has really improved. If you're into exploring the Eastern Sierra, check him out, cause that's what he does when he's not in Goldfield. Okay, <laughs> I guess we're here. Let's check out this, I think it's an Airbnb. The guy emailed me and said he had, well, he said he had an old assay office. Or wait, Doug, you said it's assay? Right, for uh, the weighing, you know, the bringing in the ore and everything. And okay, well this old assay office apparently is now some kind of Airbnb. I guess I'll just go in and find out. Well, hello. Oh, howdy. Name Thank you. Uh, and what's your name, sir? Steve Roberts. Steve Roberts, and this is your essay office? Uh-huh. You bought this old building? Yep, about five years ago. It's a 1904 essay office. This is a 1904 building. Steve has transformed this 119-year-old essay office into a very comfortable Airbnb with all the modern conveniences, including a full kitchen and bathroom with a shower. Whenever possible, he used original materials sourced from the local area, 120-year-old cabinets in the kitchen, a 1930s refrigerator, a 1940s stove, a kitchen sink that was salvaged from a mine dump, and the places decorated with antique glass bottles and historic photos of Goldfield during its boom days. But the jewel of Steve's collection is the original 120-year-old assay furnace, possibly the only one left in the world. I'd never seen anything like this thing. And to be honest, I didn't even know exactly what it was. So wait, what is this? What are we looking at? They assayed the gold. They would put the, the coal or the whatever, coke, whatever they heated it would, and they get the furnace up to 2,000 degrees and the miners would bring their sacks of gold in. And this was the most important business in town because the, the Downer brothers then would assay and tell them how much gold they were worth. So See, Doug knows all about this. I'm, I'm not from around am here. Am I saying that right? Yes, sir. 
Really cool. Good job. Life is fun. Life is fun, and it's more fun because of people like you. Thank you for letting me stay here. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to sleep on this little bed in the front room. And then I'm going to let my friend stay in the back room. But unfortunately, no, it's not Doug Barry. Because Doug Barry has to leave real early in the morning. The person who is spending the night in the back room is... Ross! Ross the one legged miner came all the way up from Tacopa. How about that? Ross, Hi. Ross, it's nice to see you. It's nice to be seen. <laughs> After stowing our things in the assay office, it was time to head outside to see what was going on. Even on a regular day, there's lots of interesting stuff to check out in Goldfield. Just walking down the street, you can't go five feet without running into all kinds of crazy antiques and collectibles, historical monuments, and all kinds of amazing old buildings. And during Goldfield days, there's even more to see and do. Food trucks, arts and crafts vendors, live music, a steak eating contest. And that wasn't the only contest going on that weekend. Okay, Ross just got talked into joining a mucking contest tomorrow morning. <laughs> this little gal here needed a partner in the... And what's your name, miss? Megan. Megan needed a partner in the mucking contest, and so Ross got rope -a doped into it. I think you guys will win. And the winner gets to keep the mine cart, right? No, you get $300. Oh. I want the mine cart. Yeah. <laughs> but the main activity at Goldfield Days is just kicking back with friends, enjoying a cold drink or two, either at the Mozart Tavern, the beer garden, or from a passing boat on the street. Oh my goodness, look what we just ran into out here on the street. Okay, if you happen to watch a video I made one time called Six Models, One RV, it was like a road trip I did with all these models, and we came to Goldfield and there was a guy who drove up in a golf cart and gave us all jello shots. Well, that's him, and he's still he's still going around with jello shots. That's all this dude ever does. And he's the grand marshal of the parade tomorrow. I can't believe it. Boy, this town is too much fun. Look at the decal on his boat. Fish Lake Yacht Club. Fish Lake is a very desolate desert valley that you might remember from a, a hot How spring I went it? to with Doug Berry once. It's desolate, desolate it? Ross. It's, well, desolate no, it's not, it? not as desolate as where we come from. How many YouTubers are in this place? There's like three at the same time. <laughs> oh, What's man, going on? Dude, it's the media. <laughs> anyway, it was a lot of fun. But I knew I couldn't stay out too late because Saturday is the main event at Goldfield Days. And it kicks off with a parade which I was invited to ride in. So Ross and I headed back to the assay office relatively early to make sure we were well rested. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a night. Oh. Looks like Ross is already up and at him. I think there's a pancake breakfast going on. And if I know Ross, well, he's probably over there snarfing down pancakes. I'm pretty sure Doug is already long gone. Yeah, his truck's gone. Unfortunately, Doug couldn't stay for the rest of the weekend, but it was nice seeing him last night. Anyway, if I'm gonna be in this parade, <laughs> I better do something about my face. Okay. I guess I'm ready to join the parade. Time to go outside and greet the day. Ross! Hi, I'm gonna go get my chair, um, since I was gifted a chair. Oh, nice, Ross uh, got a free chair. Where in the lineup are you gonna be? I'm gonna be in the Model T Ford, I think uh, towards the beginning, but I'm not sure. All I knew was I was looking for a man named Ooh. Glenn, and I was supposed to meet him right around the corner from the assay office. Oh gosh, look in the window. Uh, it's a mannequin. I knew I liked this town. Okay, I think I'm supposed to meet him near the telephone office, which seems like a really interesting old building. By the way, oh, hey, will, you, will you tell us about this building? This, this, this is the Southern Nevada Consolidated Telephone and Telegraph Company building, and it handled the telephones for all of Goldfield during its boom years, 1904 to 19. 
And so there yeah. were like phone booths in there that you could go yeah, in? Yeah, because and... a lot of people still didn't have telephones in their oh, homes sure. that cost money. So you would come here and there was there were three telephone booths. So you could just use, it's yeah. kind of like an early internet cafe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, this happens to also be where Jim Casey, the founder of the United Parcel Service, got his start. The founder of UPS? That's correct. Started at this time? He, he, he and a friend of his came down from the Pacific Northwest. Wow. And uh, they uh, began a messenger service where they would deliver telegrams and, and sometimes uh, telephone messages to people in town. Wow. And, uh, that's how UPS got started. How about that? Right. Okay, so you're Glenn. Yep. And you're going to be driving the car that I'll be riding in the parade in? Right. And what, where, where is it? It's right over here. This is what we're riding in? 1923. Ford C cab. A 1923 Ford C cab. Wow. Is this yours? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, three pedals. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Look One at that. One on the right is a brake. Oh, so there is a brake. Good. <laughs> yeah. Brake. And this is reverse. That's reverse. And this is first gear if you push it all the way down there. Uh huh. And you let it out halfway, that's neutral, and you let it out all the way, and that's high. How about that? And this thing still runs after and all this these is years. The gas. Oh, that's the gas pedal. Yeah. Oh, my, or guest lever. <laughs> Riding in that 100-year-old Model T was a hoot and a half. We slowly chugged along the streets of Goldfield, headed for the parade staging area, and it was almost like going back in time to the days of Goldfield's boom years. Some of the buildings in town are dilapidated, but many have been beautifully restored, so it was easy to imagine the once-thriving city this was. All right, we're getting staged for our position in the parade. There's Bobby, the Grand Marshal, with all the jello shots, riding in his boat. Well, I'm gonna have to dress up for this next year. I need an old-timey dress like that. Oh, wow, look at Jerry. Woo -hoo! Love it. Wow, this is so cool. People get so fired up for this festival. I'm definitely coming back next year. Okay, we're pulling into place right behind the marshal. And here's what's really interesting. Look at the front of our Model T. <laughs> honored guest. I get to be the honored guest. That's pretty exciting. And I'm not kidding. I really was excited and flattered to be called an honored guest, especially considering all the other people in this parade. From Grand Marshal Bobby with his jello shots to local law enforcement and emergency services, costumed reenactors, and esteemed partiers of every stripe. The parade stretched all the way down Main Street, which also happens to be US Highway 95, and it was pretty cool to see all the happy people lined up on either side of the street, smiling and waving and just enjoying being out in the beautiful summer sunshine, celebrating the history of a town that just refuses to die. By the time we neared the end of the route on the edge of town, my face hurt from smiling so much. I was having so much fun. Woo! Oh, this building here has the best secret bar inside it. I had a drink or three in there last night. And it's funny because I've driven down this highway so many times and I always wondered what was in there. Now I know but it's only open one weekend a year. All the more reason to come back to Goldfield Days next year. Wow, I never thought I'd be riding down US 95 in the bed of a 100-year-old Model T Ford. Dreams really do come true. After thanking Glenn for a smooth ride, it was time to join the party and meet some of the people who'd come out to celebrate. As you might expect, there was no shortage of colorful characters. Welcome to Goldfield. Love your style. Oh, why, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, we're here talking to Rick. Rick lives in Goldfield. Yep. And where'd you move here from? Southern California. It's from Southern California. You've been <laughs> how long you been here? Uh, just over three years. And you like it? Oh yeah. Love you love it? it? Yeah. Uh, what do you love about it? <coughs> not very populated. It's it's not California. <laughs> yeah, it's not in California. <laughs> well, that's the nice thing about Nevada. It's legal to carry. You know, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Open carry here yeah. in Esmeralda County, huh? 
1911. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Means uh, business. Awesome. Hey, Mr. Sir, Sir, uh, can you tell us about your uh, shirt? Oh, I'm here to disprove the flat earth theory. <laughs> Disproving the flat earth theory. No conspiracies here. Look at this, we got this big old tough cowboy holding this little, you said it was a chorky? Chorky. This is a baby Chihuahua Yorkie mix named Bandit, right? Yep. And you got Bandit because what? So about a month ago, I had to put my, my, my girl down, my Gracie. Oh, you had Gracie for 12 years? Yep. And I went to Oregon to visit my kids, they're all grown up. And they sent me to the store and I came back and he was waiting for me. And, and so, it was love at first sight? Pretty much. Oh, how could you not? Oh my goodness. Oh, wait a minute, who's this? Major what? Moxie, I got something for you. Wonder how Major you. Moxie? I, I've been looking all day for you. This is Major Moxie Babylon from Reno. Badass roller derby queen. I met her at a hot spring about a year ago and she gave me a bottle of champagne. And now what? Oh my god, look, it's a bottle of Campari with a sticker. Is this you? See, I told you she was a badass roller derby girl. Wow, that's I'm so glad. I found you. Oh my, I'm glad you found me too. Wow, look at her outfit. Look at that. Dang, you got more costumes than I do. Ooh, okay, now I'm gonna walk down the street to check out this Green Parrot Saloon. I've driven past it so many times over the years, it's long closed, but apparently they do open it up <laughs> once a year. Woo! How about that? There were classic cars everywhere at Goldfield Days. Parked around town, driving down the street, tucked away hidden inside an old garage, and there was even a car show going on at the Green Parrot Saloon, with everything from motorcycles and rat rods to muscle cars. But cars and bikes weren't what brought me over to the Green Parrot. I don't know, is it time for a hair of the dog? Hi! How are you? Good, how are you? Is it beer o'clock already? Uh, you're about four <laughs> hours late. Uh, Okay, let's go in and check out this green parrot. Driven past this so many times. Very curious. Oh, look at the pennies on the wall. Oh, wow. Holy cow, pardon me. Wow, look, this is all pennies on the wall of this. How many pennies is this? Oh, it's written in dimes. Oh, 114,561 pennies. Well, they have to glue a lot back up. What, do people steal them? No, they fall off. Oh. Well, maybe, maybe you just need better glue. We haven't been open since 93. Wow, this is the first time you've been open after uh, since... We opened up last year for this same weekend. And this weekend, uh, for Goldfield Days, we're doing it again this year. Next year, hopefully, we'll be open permanently. Oh, you're going to reopen permanently? Right. Oh, far out! We have a lot of work to do to get back. Woo! Oh, I don't know. They didn't have a lot of mixers in there, and I gotta pace myself. It's only 11 a.m., so maybe I'll wait and get a drink down the street. Okay, one of the highlights of Goldfield Days is they have this huge land auction. You can buy land out here for relatively cheap, and they have a land auction here at the town square every Goldfield day. So let's go check that out. Able to bid, able to buy, able to go to where? Who will give me 2,000? Able to bid. This is a good old fashioned, honest to goodness auction where you can pick up property in Esmeralda County, which happens to be one of the least populated counties in the United States, for pennies on the dollar because the previous owners fell behind on their tax payments. And when I say pennies on the dollar, I'm not kidding. These prices were insane. Okay, here we go. Auction item number one. Parcel number 0010713. Block 31, lots one and two. Located on the corner of Miner Street and Valley View Street, there's no improvements. Minimum bid, $2,200. All right, somebody get me started. $2,200 bid. Able to bid, able to buy, able to go 22 where? I got 22, now 23, now 24. Able to bid 24, now 2,500, now 2,600. Able to bid 26, now 27 to you. 27, 2,800. Able to bid, able to 28, now 29. Who will give me 3,000? Able to bid 3, now 31, now 32. Able to bid 32, 3,300, now 34, now 35, 3,600. 36 now, 3700, 3800 to you. 38 now, 39 now, 4000. 
Able to go 4,000, now 41, now 42, now 4,300. Able to bid 43, now 44. Able to bid 4,500, now 4,600. Able to bid 46, 4,700, now 49. How about 5,000 for it? Now, how about 5,500? Able to bid 55, now 6,000. Able to bid 6,000, able to bid 6,000, 5,600. You want to go 56? We're going to sell it your way for $5,000. Just buyer number 65. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, 5,500. Yes. All right, 1,700. Give me going. $5,500 is pretty cheap for a piece of property, but you can get lots for even less at the Goldfield Days auction. Cool, give me 1,800. Where? Able to bid, able to go 1,800. It's, it's only 1,800 bucks for a parcel. Here we go. I don't know where else we can buy property that cheap. It's just money. Let it buy your happiness. 1800 able to bid 18 all in no one else sold it 1700 buyer number 66 1700 dollars for a plot of land in the united states i mean sure it's in the middle of nowhere but you'd have all these interesting people as your neighbors i was tempted to bid on my own lot but i already had another prior commitment Okay, now I'm going to go into 89.1 KGFN. They have this really funky independent radio station here. And the DJ wants to interview me. Well, at least he said he wanted to interview me. But when I got to the radio station, there was nobody there. Oh, look, no smoking, no pets, no alcohol. No oh, golly. What kind of radio station is this? So after waiting around for about 20 minutes, I figured I'd just go back out on the street and talk to some more people. This is a vacuum cleaner cover? Yeah. Oh, you made this? She, yeah, she's supposed to set out a vacuum cleaner, but that was when vacuum cleaners had... Right, the upright up. handle, yeah. Now they're curved. Now they're so, curved, and so these vacuum so cleaner covers. So she's just on a... What a clever <laughs> idea. And what's your name? Sandy. And Sandy, you've lived here in Goldfield for how long? About 20 years. You watch a lot of my videos? Oh yeah. Oh look at how Every time that? I see you up there, I oh, watch Well, you. it's really nice to I meet love, you. I love, I love your show. Thank you. They're, they're really, really fun. You well, know? thank you. And I'm glad to be here in your town and seeing have, all your cool you stuff. Have you had a good time here so Yes, far? I'm actually going over to the radio right now to oh, do an interview. I thought you were over there. I was, but he ignored me. Now all of a sudden he wants me to come back. <laughs> After chatting with Sandy, Carl, the DJ who runs Radio Goldfield, was finally ready to talk, only, at first, it seemed he was mostly interested in just talking about himself. Carl is one of those guys who has a million great stories and is a great storyteller. So it was a lot of fun sitting in his DJ booth listening to him. But my new friend Isabel, who I call Pistol Annie because of the revolver she wears on her hip, has her own show on Radio Goldfield. So I was hoping that's what Carl wanted to talk to me about but he never seemed to get around to it. Ooh, How about I this? He said he wanted to interview me for the radio, they're, they're really but he good. hasn't stopped talking the whole time <laughs> I've been in here. <laughs> I thought you were going to interview me. Oh, you know what? I, I did interview you. I did interview for the radio, but I, what I interviewed you for, what I want you to do <laughs> is I want you to get together with me and let's produce you have a you have a computer yeah and you're computer savvy and you do the recording do you do the uh, she does the recording. i do i got the mic and i can record it yeah what okay. what should i record so, so you're saying that. that wonder hussy might be on kgfn 89.1 radio goldfield in the near future it could be it how could about that it could happen yeah, well, okay, wow, that DJ can wow. talk, but he was very interesting. We had a great time visiting with him, but we couldn't stay long because it's time for the mucking contest. Ross is going to be in the mucking contest. Uh. Though the land auction might be what brings most people here, Goldfield Days is above all a celebration of mining culture. So the mucking contest is a pretty big deal. Teams of two had to fill an old mine cart with dirt and the fastest team won a $300 prize. There's still plenty of active mines in the area around Goldfield, and this contest gave the young miners of today the chance to show off their skills. Wow, I feel so lazy. Yeah, these are men, real men. 
Wow, and it is hot today. I can't imagine how these guys are doing this. It's like 91 degrees. Mmm, smells like dirt. Okay, here comes the next duo. Little Pistol Annie from last night, AKA Isabel. This chick is badass. She works at a gold mine up in Round Mountain, and she's gonna muck in a skirt and boots with her pistol around her waist. Okay, guys, you ready? Set, go! Woo! Isabel! Look at her go, man. This chick is a monster. Look at them biceps. Dang. And cute as a button. Oh, and Matt's not bad looking either. Get some dirt on the shovel, man! Oh dear, Ross is over there heckling. Ross and his partner, Megan, they're uh, they're going last. Maybe Ross is feeling a little nervous. And to all you guys who say they don't make them like that anymore, Isabel is here to prove you wrong. They sure do still make them like that. You just gotta know where to look. 2-11-49. Good job, sis. <laughs> okay, so they weren't fast enough. That's okay. Ross and Megan could still take the win. How do you guys feel? Great. Ah, <laughs> okay, good. That's what I thought. Come on, Ross. Come on, Megan. You got this. Right. Ross, the one-legged miner, ladies and gentlemen. Go. He said go. Showing the world that being an amputee doesn't mean a thing. That's a tough gal. Good job, Megan. All right, let's see what they get. Nice work. Oh, what? They did it under two minutes. Good job, guys. Well, I don't know, guys. Ross beat you. Yeah, he did. But not by too much. <laughs> you'll get you'll get him next time. Okay, this last couple of muckers is really gonna blow your mind. Wow. This couple here, this gal, this little dress and fishnets, and her minor partner. They bought two pieces of property in the auction earlier and they're gonna camp out for the very first night on their land tonight. So wouldn't it be cool if they won the $300 mucking prize and scored two pieces of land all in one day. Ross, if you would have been wearing fishnets, you might have won. <laughs> Unfortunately, despite mucking like a true beast in her fishnets and corset, the new landowners weren't fast enough to win the top prize, nor were Isabel or Ross. The $300 ended up going to two guys named Pepe and Caesar, but a good time was had by all, and I ended up buying a really cool antique settee from one of the vendors, which I thought would look right at home in my Death Valley compound. And even though they were totally tuckered out from mucking, my friends were kind enough to help me carry it back to Ross's van so he could take it back home for me. After all the day's crazy events, we were all pretty tired. In fact, Ross passed out on the couch immediately after the mucking contest. And who can blame him? I was ready to hit the hay early myself, but I couldn't spend my last night in Goldfield without paying one more visit to my favorite secret bar. After all, it's only open one weekend a year. Well, that's about it. Looks like they're already rolling up the sidewalks because Goldfield Days is over. I think everybody's hungover and still sleeping, but it's another beautiful day here in rural Nevada and I'm off to more adventures. But I will definitely be back to Goldfield to make many more videos about all these weird buildings and interesting people that I met over the last 48 hours. And I'll definitely be back to Goldfield days again next year. And I hope you'll join me.